now available in paperback and ebook book The Man Who Rules the World. John Hayes must bring together men and gods to overcome a threat that seeks to destroy the planet. The Man Who Rules the World, now available in paperback and e-readers everywhere. For some bizarre reason, Netflix has decided to cancel Luke Cage. Now, I can understand Netflix canceling Iron Fist because after the disastrous second season it had, it was shown that the hero wasn't able to protect himself, but Luke Cage was the most popular series on Netflix. And it's a literally mind-boggling, head-scratching thing that this series was canceled at the height of its popularity. Now, Luke Cage, after its second season, was a series that literally surpassed even Marvel Studios movies like Black Panther, Avengers Infinity War, and Ant-Man and the Wasp in terms of production values, writing, directing, and acting, and overall quality. Because after Luke Cage Season 2, we were shown a series that was on the level of Warner Brothers' The Dark Knight, which is considered the pinnacle of superhero films. And after the masterpiece, well-crafted ending that we got at the end of Luke Cage Season 2, where Luke Cage literally became the power man as the sheriff of Harlem, many were anticipating Season 3, and many people thought that Season 3 was going to go on, including executive producer Chio Hodari Coker, who was working on scripts for Season 3 and thought that the show was under contract. But it seems like the show, Luke Cage, even in spite of the critical acclaim it received and the incredible amount of popularity, just didn't fit Marvel's narrative for superheroes, and that was the core reason why Netflix decided to cancel Luke Cage. Now, I believe that Netflix was ready to go on this series because with this series being so popular that it literally crashed their servers in the first season and was still popular in the second season and had a large audience anticipating watching it for the third, I believe Netflix had every reason to go out here and continue on with a third season. Now I know some comic fans are speculating that the cancellation of Luke Cage was going to lead up to a Heroes for Hire series, but I really don't think that's the thing that's going to happen, because with the way both Luke Cage and Iron Fist ended, a Heroes for Hire series would be an incredibly disjointed project the way Netflix's Defenders was, because if we look at the ending of Iron Fist, we had Danny Rand drifting and going out to go look for Orson Randall in the quest to become the immortal Iron Fist, and Luke Cage was the Sheriff of Harlem. So those storylines really needed to be finished in an organic fashion to transition into Heroes for Hire. Now, others are speculating that the cancellation was Luke Cage was due to them wanting to have exclusive content for its streaming service. And I don't think that's the case at all, because Daredevil got a season three, and as terrible as Jessica Jones was in season two, she got a season three. And with Disney still hurting after making the boneheaded decision to cancel Tim Allen's Last Man Standing, a profitable television show that was winning its time slot due to what they call business decisions based on the production company making money off of it, but really, I believe, political reasons because Tim Allen was a Republican. The last thing they want to do is hand another hit show to a competing network like they did with Last Man Standing when it went over to Fox and became a hit. Nor do they want to go out of their way to leave a sour taste in people's mouths regarding their streaming service because taking Luke Cage from Netflix over to their new streaming service would leave a sour taste in comic fans' mouths who would now have to pay for two streaming services just to watch their favorite shows. And that's the kind of move that goes out of its way to alienate customers. Plus, that hard R-rated content on Luke Cage really didn't fit into Disney's image. There's nothing like characters like Misty Knight and Luke Cage dropping F-bombs to rile up all of those Middle Western American mothers 
who would watch their streaming service to, to see Disney's Princesses, Zack and Cody, reruns, That's So Raven, and Doc Stuffins, and it just wouldn't fit into their brand. So what I see as related to the cancellation of Luke Cage has to do really with Marvel Studios and with Marvel's current direction as the core reason why Netflix decided to cancel Luke Cage. Because again, Chio Hodari Coker was clearly ready to do a season three. He thought a season three was getting ready to go. He was working on scripts for season three. But from what I read, Marvel wanted to find some way to try to change the show. And the way they wanted, I believe, to change the show was to try to try to worm more and more of the gynocentrism and identity politics onto Luke Cage that literally derailed Iron Fist. And in the 10 episodes they were planning for season 3, it looked like Chio Coker was trying to work with them on the issue of trying to keep Cage hard and gritty in spite of the identity politics that was trying to worm its way into the show. Because if you look at Luke Cage season 2, there were attempts to try to bring that gynocentrism and identity politics into the show, but Coker's solid writing really kept those elements at bay and allowed us to see a hero who was a strong, heterosexual, masculine black man, a man who would take the lead in his community, a man who would be someone who would take responsibility for the community, and someone who would take efforts to protect the community, someone who would be a strong hero for the black community, and I believe that's what Disney had a real serious issue with as related to Luke Cage, because when I look at many of the people who work at Marvel these days, they have a real serious issue with heterosexual black men, and all you have to do is look at the new Luke Cage digital series, and you'll see that, because when you look at the Luke Cage in the comics, who was married to Jessica Jones, he's a completely emasculated, weak man, and that's what I believe Marvel wanted to do, was change the strong, masculine Luke Cage into the cucked, emasculated hero that is in their comics, and they wanted to change the direction of the show to reflect that character in the comics, not the one that Chio Coker had adapted in his series, because the hero Chio Coker had adapted in his series was nothing even like the character in the old Power Man comics. He was literally a brand new character, and he was a character that really came from a black man's perspective. And seeing a positive picture from a black man's perspective, I believe, made Marvel's executives really uncomfortable. Because seeing this black man taking the lead in his community, this man being a hero in his community, and having power in his community, I believe that's what made those executives at Marvel extremely uncomfortable because that narrative runs counter to what they want to promote in their comics because in their comics they want to show us this black man who is lower than the white heroes but in Chio Coker's cage we see a black man who is strong and powerful and that again is on the level of the white heroes and that makes them uncomfortable. So they don't want to show you that type of black man in their show, the kind of black man that I grew up with, and the kind of black man I am right now. They don't want to show you that black man, a black man who is confident, who is strong, and is willing to take the power in their communities, and is somebody who is using, going to use that power to protect that community from the criminals who would try to terrorize it because at the end of Luke Cage season two we saw Luke Cage confronting mafia people we saw him confronting the white woman who is the teacher of culture of white supremacy and we saw him standing up to people and seeing those images of a black man standing up to a white woman that really, I believe, made those Marvel executives cringe because here we had this black man saying that he was going to 
when he got power, not only use that power to protect his community from the inside threats like Mariah and people like Cottonmouth, but he was also going to use that power to take on white supremacist threats like the mob, which was Annabella Shiora was playing. That's what they were scared of. And the whole idea of that whole sheriff of Harlem, or also as I call him, the power man, because that's what he was, the power man over the Harlem's paradise in his suit and tie, that was another image that made many white people uncomfortable because the whole idea of Harlem's Paradise, which was supposed to be the heaven, and then you have a black man being God over it, that's the idea that made many at Marvel uncomfortable because here we have a black man finally back in his position as a leader and an authority figure, and the whole idea of showing that image, again, made many at Marvel extremely uncomfortable and that ending where he literally as some people say dismisses Misty Knight but I show it I see it as him showing Misty Knight her place as the help meet and support literally taking back his position as God's uh, steward and God's figurehead leader and authority figure the one who can who's with a direct connection to God that's what Luke Cage season 2 showed us it showed us a black man returning to his place as God's leader, God's steward, God's authority figure, and I believe that's what made those Marvel and Disney executives uncomfortable, because what they want to see from black men is one of these emasculated, neutered black men, like T'Challa was in this Black Panther movie, where you had T'Challa literally being nagged and um, ribbed and emasculated by almost every female figure in the series, in the movie, and every woman having to go out of their way to save him from himself. That's what they're comfortable with, one of these black males. Yes, he's powerful, rich, and successful, but at the end of the day, he is submitting to female authority. Whereas if you look at Luke Cage, he never submitted or deferred to female authority figures and he took the lead in every situation he was in. Even when he had the confrontation with Bushmaster, he was still the one calling the shots. And seeing that type of image of black man, I believe, is the thing that literally terrified many of those Disney executives. And what really terrified those Disney executives was the fact that in season three, we were going to see a power man, a black man with the intelligence and ability to take leadership in his community, a black man who was going to take control of his community, and a black man who was going to be seen as a role model and an authority figure in his community. And that type of black man on screen for Disney is not something they want to see, nor is it a narrative they want to push because to push that kind of narrative as related to black men that is something that runs counter to the whole white supremacist foundation of the Disney Corporation this is something that many people don't know is that your Walt Disney when he was alive was one of the biggest racist out here he didn't think much of black people and when you have someone like Chio Hodari Coker presenting you with an incredibly balanced and humanized image of a black man and showing you a picture of what a black man is really like, that is something, again, that absolutely terrifies many of these white Hollywood executives who have their own ideas about black men. Because what Chio Coker did in Luke Cage, his first season and second season, was he took a character that white people made that to be a racist stereotype, and he transformed it into a human type. And this is something that was the most amazing thing to see about Chio Coker's Luke Cage, was he took this character in his adaptation, and he made it his own character. And this is what I believe Marvel had a problem with, and I believe Marvel was going to try to 
change the character in season three and try to take away the power of the power man because I see it in the underlying themes. I think those were that the executives came in talking about where Iron Fist says Luke Cage had a dark spirit or and Misty Knight saying that he might become corrupted. I believe that's from Marvel's executives because, again, they don't like the idea of a black man having the kind of power that puts him on the level of a white man. And that's something that I wrote about when I was doing The Temptation of John Haynes and The Man Who Rules the World. When I was writing that with the John Haynes character, I was showing you how this black man, when given that type of power, had the character to be the kind of man who met the God standard, not the stereotype standard of these white supremacists or these white racists. So when I was writing John Haynes, I was writing a character very similar to what we saw in Luke Cage season two, a man who people thought could not be a leader, but eventually did become a leader and an authority figure and took control not only over his community, but also showed that he could rule the world. And the way he showed he could rule the world was by taking control of himself. And by taking control of himself, he was able to set a direction to be able to take on threats like the God Cassius threat, which was going to threaten the entire world and protect the world from that threat of God Cassius and the gem of omnipotence in the man who rules the world. So I understand what Chio Coker was doing in that brilliant second season. And when I looked at that second season, that's what was the greatest thing about the whole second season was we saw this character transformation arc where we saw this man who was originally a police officer, again, a deviation from the original Luke Cage, come back to Harlem to bring law and order to Harlem as the power man, the man who would be the ruler over Harlem, the man who would restore order to Harlem, and the man who would be God's steward over Harlem. But what Marvel wanted to do was say that this man was an evil man, a bad man, and they wanted to say that, that he would be tempted by that power. And yes, that would be that was a great story element in there about him being tempted by his human failings. But what I wanted, but the whole thing is that Netflix wanted to continue on with this series, but Marvel didn't want to continue on with the series. The Luke Cage series they probably wanted to do would feature Jessica Jones emasculating him about not buying the right cereal like it was in the Luke Cage comic that recently was published digitally, or things like Luke Cage not being able to take care of himself or his own child. That's the type of stuff that gynocentrists want to see because they don't think that black men are capable of not only being able to take care of their families, but take care of themselves. So gynocentrists, racists, feminists, white supremacists, they wanted to see what an emasculated, ignorant black man, because that makes them feel comfortable. And they're more comfortable with images of black men like James Olsen, the guardian of the friend zone, who was out here literally pining for Kara Zor-El, the supergirl or the pinnacle of white beauty, or a bumbling, stumbling Mr. Terrific, the world's third smartest man who cannot even figure out how to navigate something like basic life skills, or they don't or they want to see a John Diggle, a buck dancing butler who literally is begging for a job of being a hero that he did not earn, or they want to see your Black Panther, your good black man who literally follows behind female authority figures. Those are the images of black heroes that Marvel and Disney are comfortable with, but most people seem to have no problem seeing that strong masculine black man that Luke Cage was because when I talk to people online and I listen to not only black audiences but there were white people and Asian people and people all over the world who enjoyed Luke Cage and they enjoyed it because they enjoyed seeing a man be a man and seeing a man in the natural role that God created for men. That's what they loved about Luke Cage but because Disney and Marvel are more about agenda, this is why we're not going to see a Luke 
Cage series because, again, I do not believe that Netflix would cancel this series unless they saw that this series was going to lose the money because the Luke Cage series, again, was the most popular series on Netflix. It led to millions of people subbing to Netflix and it led to people anticipating to continue their subscriptions with Netflix. So Netflix had a lot of money to lose from Luke Cage being canceled and I believe the only reason why they canceled the season three was due to the issues they were having with Disney as related to the product they wanted to create and they believed that the product that they wanted to create in those 10 scripts was going to be subpar because after a season two that literally was 10 times better than any of their recent Marvel Studios films like Avengers Infinity War, like Ant-Man and the Wasp and Black Panther, it was clear to me that Gio Hodari Coker had made a product that was far superior to anything Marvel Studios had ever produced. So it really didn't make any logical sense to end it from Netflix's perspective because they were getting a superior product for their streaming service, but it would make sense as related to the current state of Marvel Comics right now. Now, if you were a regular viewer of channels like Diversity in Comics, Just Some Guy, Mid Handroom, and even my own channel, you'll know that we've all talked about how Marvel has gone on this forced diversity initiative and how they're all about identity politics right now. And, be and I believe it was that whole narrative of identity politics as being the core reason for Luke Cage being canceled after the second season because it wasn't that the show was a black show it was about the show being a black show that did not fit the narrative for those people who currently work at Marvel who wanted to see a certain type of image as related to black men and because they wanted to see a certain image as related to black men this is what led to the friction between Netflix and Disney as related to the Luke Cage show and the showrunner Chio Hardari Coker because they had no problem with Chio Coker over the first two seasons but over this third one this is where we started to see the issues because those far leftists who work at Marvel have an issue with black men and they have an issue with strong black men because strong black men clearly have conservative values and it's those conservative values that make them uncomfortable because they would rather again see somebody like a Black Panther who is passive and follows female authority or someone like Iron Fist who follows female authority rather than see a black man taking the lead and setting his own course and that's what we saw because we saw Chio Hodari Coker's vision for Luke Cage and we saw a story from a black man's perspective and that again is something that made many in Hollywood uncomfortable because we finally saw a story about a black superhero from a black man's perspective and that story showed us not only a balanced and humanized hero but it showed us a story of a hero who was on the level of Batman and showed us that we could create a hero that was on the same level as the best adaptation of Batman. Now, a lot of people are upset over the cancellation of Luke Cage, but I also see it as an opportunity. And as Luke Cage learned in the end of season one to always go forward, and his pop has told him to go forward, I believe Chio Hodari Coker can go forward in his career because with credits like Almost Human under his belt and Luke Cage under his belt, he has clearly shown that he is a master craftsman as related to black fantasy and black fantasy films, and he can is a master of adapting black fantasy. And if Chio Hodari Coker is out there, I want to offer him an opportunity of a lifetime to work with me towards adapting John Haynes for the silver screen because when I looked at Luke Cage and Luke Cage season two I saw a lot of visuals that 
were straight, like literally like taken straight out of the temptation of John Haynes and they literally looked like things that I would want to see on screen if I ever made a temptation of John Haynes film and I believe that Chio Hodari Coker is the producer I would want to work with on a temptation of John Haynes film and I if I would love to work with him on a temptation of John Haynes film so Luke Cage may be ending but I would love to have an opportunity to work with a black producer who understands black fantasy understands the nuances of telling stories in black fantasy and someone who would t help me tell the story of John Haynes from a black man's perspective and make efforts to give us a story that stays true to the spirit of John Haynes and gives us the rich multi-dimensional story of the temptation of John Haynes and gives us a balanced humanized picture of the John Haynes character like he did with the character in Almost Human and like what he did with Luke Cage. I believe that this could be a great blessing in disguise and it could be a great opportunity for Chio Hodari Coker to work towards making a masterpiece in a project like The Temptation of John Haynes and making something incredible that even surpasses the quality of Luke Cage Season 3 because I look at the visuals again in Luke Cage Season 2 and Season 1 and again I saw a lot of parallels to what I wrote in Temptation of John Haynes. I see a lot of story points that were similar to what I wrote in Temptation of John Haynes and I see a great story that he could tell and if we could get together and put together a incredibly ca group cast of actors and our the storytelling abilities, collaborate on our storytelling abilities I, with something like Netflix, I believe we can make a classic in terms of African American fantasy and science fiction and that the this, this sky is nothing but the limit for this and this would be a great way of Chio Hope, um, Hadari Coker moving forward because he is a very talented producer. He has shown that he is a master craftsman as it relates to adapting stories as related to the black experience and he has shown that he will make efforts to give us those balanced humanized images of black people in his stories and that's something I would love to be a part of that's something that I would love to work with him on and yes Luke Cage is over but it's a great opportunity for him to jump on a great project like John Haynes. Now if you want to try the John Haynes series, which is the first book is The Conversation with Death, The Temptation of John Haynes, or The Man Who Rules the World. You may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com in the description box. There you can pick up The Temptation of John Haynes, The Man Who Rules the World, and John Haynes, A Conversation with Death on Amazon.com in paperback or Kindle format. And I believe that if you read those books, you will see a strong masculine black hero like Luke Cage and that's going to be a great experience for everyone and if you want to help me make more videos like this you can donate to my patreon by clicking the link in the description box that's all i have to say for this video you can comment rate and subscribe now available in paperback and kindle unlimited john haynes a conversation with death a man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural john haynes series adventure get john haynes a conversation with death for 99 cents on kindle or in paperback today.